So we all know we can use the Meta's Interaction SDK to track our hands and detect different hand poses. But did you know you can track your whole body and detect different body poses as well? Sadly, the documentation isn't that helpful and there isn't a single video online showing you how to set it up. However, we do have the example scene. So after playing around for a bit, I figured it out. So here I am today to show you how to create body poses and track them. So let's get started. So here I have my Unity project open, which has been set up with the latest Meta XR All-in-One SDK version 64. And it has been set up with all the player settings. You can also download this startup project from the GitHub link in the description below. Now to set up our scene, we can select the main camera and delete it. In your project window, search for large room. Now if you're not able to see this prefab, make sure the search is selected for all. Select the prefab and add it to your scene. Next to add a skybox, in your project window, you can search for skybox gradient and select this material and add it to your scene. Next, search for OVR camera rig interaction. Select this prefab and add it to your hierarchy. Now this prefab comes with the OVR camera rig which has a tracking space and the OVR interaction comprehensive which means it has all the necessary components to track your hands controllers and it also has the interactors like grab interactor, poke interactor and the others. Now to enable body tracking in your project window you need to search for OVR body. Select the prefab and drag and drop it inside the OVR interaction comprehensive. So this prefab has a body script and its child has the OVR body. So this is responsible for uh, tracking your body. It gets the raw data. Here you can either choose to use the upper body or full body. Now I'm going to show you for full body so you can enable that. And once you have the raw data uh, from OVR body data, so it basically takes this and processes the data and make sure it's available for us to use using the body script. So using the body script, you can get all the post data. You can get the different angles between uh, different joint and the joint mapping as well. Now, if you select the OVR body data source, you can see that it needs a camera re reference, which is inside the OVR interaction comprehensive. So select it and drag and drop it inside here like this. Next, create an empty game object as a child of OVR body and call it as post from body. Add a component called as post from body and reference the OVR body over here. Now, as the name suggests, you can use this script to drive any other component that references it. You will understand this in a bit. Then in your project window, search for OVR body from post, select this prefab and add it to your scene. Now this prefab comes with an avatar mesh and its bone transforms. If you check the OVR body from post prefab, you'll see that it has the OVR custom skeleton, which has mapped all the bone transform to the bone enums. And if we scroll down, it has the OVR body post skeleton provider. So what this does is once you provide a pose, it's going to update all the transforms and you'll be able to see the pose on your avatar. So now to set this up, let's go and change it from upper body to full body. It will give you a warning saying that the OVR body component has to be added. So let's click on that. And if you scroll down, you'll see that the component has been added. Full body is selected. We want to select full body here as well. Now, just to show you a demo, let's go ahead and reset the transform position. Bring it slightly forward here and rotate it by 180 so that you're able to see it. And then let's go to the OVR body skeleton provider and add a body pose, which is going to be coming from the pose from body. So what's happening right now is we're going to get the body pose data in real time. And this script is going to update all these transforms. So you will be able to see the body pose reflected on this avatar. So now make sure to connect your headset using link or rare link. If you're not sure how to do that, then you can check out this video over here and then save your scene and press play. And as you can see here, the avatar is mimicking my body pose. Now, since I'm sitting down on a seat, the knees are bent as well. Now, if I stand up or if I just put my headset on top here like this, you can see that the avatar is standing. So it's trying to get your current body position, which is super cool. Next, to create and store the body pose data in your asset folder, right click and create a new folder called as body pose. Inside this folder, right click, create, Oculus interaction SDK pose detection and select body pose. Let's give our pose a name. So probably we'll have something like thumbs up setting. Here you'll notice a warning saying that this data is outdated and it's recommended for us to update it. So let's go ahead and upgrade it. Then go ahead and duplicate it twice or as many number of poses you'd like to have, but make sure to rename them accordingly. In my case, I'm going to call this as thumbs down setting and punch standing. Then click on Oculus interactions body pose recorder now here it says that the recorder works only in play mode so click on play once you're inside the play mode we need to add the target asset so first let's start by punch standing so i'm going to add this here 
Now capture delay is number of seconds after you click this button is the time you'll get to actually uh, go into that position so that it gets captured. Uh, I'll select it as 10 seconds and let's do it. So click on capture pose and now I'm going to stand up. All right, so after 10 seconds, you'll be able to hear a sound that gets played, which means that the capture has been completed. So I have the bunch standing done. Next, you can add the thumb standing down and let's capture once again. All right, and finally for the last one, which is thumbs up sitting, let's create the body pose. All right, so now we have the three body poses. Now to see them visually, what we can do is we can duplicate this bring it forward and we can scale this down and we can place it somewhere on top of the table like this. Duplicate this two more times and place it next to each other. Next for better understanding, let's rename to match the pose that they actually show. Then open its child object and then select each one of them. And here we need to change the body pose. So for punch standing, we need to drag and drop this here. For thumbs down sit sitting, we need to select this and drop it over here. And for thumbs up setting, we'll select this and drag and drop it over here like this. Now you can save the scene and this time when you press play, you will be able to see all the poses that you have recorded. And now finally to add pose detection, you can select all the three prefabs and add the component called as body pose comparer active state. Now this needs a pose A and pose B. So the pose A is going to be the pose from our body, which is going to come in real time. And for pose B, we need to select the prefab individually and drag and drop the respective positions. Then you can select all the three prefab once again. And let's go ahead and uh, configure this. Now this configuration gives you the ability to add certain tolerances for each of your body poses. Now to give you an example, if our body pose is thumbs up when we are sitting down and for each of the joint, you can give certain tolerance. Now, right now, my thumb pose is something like this, where I'm sitting and both the hands are aligned together. Whereas the other one is slightly thumbs down or thumbs up is slightly far away. And maximum angle is going to be the angle between each of the joints. It could be between your upper arm and lower arm, whether it should be 30, more than 30. So this is something angle that you can give and how did you want to follow the body pose detection. So for now, we'll just add it for our head. And then let's add it for our upper arm, lower arm and uh, for both left and right, obviously, and for our wrist as well. All right, so here I have added the configuration, like I said, for the head, left arm, upper left arm, lower left hand wrist, and same thing for the right hand as well. I've left it at default values. Now you can play around with these values and um, set it up as per your needs. Now the next step is to do something when the body pose is detected. For now, we are going to just debug it. For that, you need to add active state debug visual. Now here, it takes an active state, which is going to be the body pose comparer active state. And the target renderer is going to be the mesh renderer of the individual avatars that we have. All right, so with that, we have our scene set up. Now we can save the scene, press play and test it. Now, as you can see here, initially all of the poses are red in color, which means the poses are not detected. However, when I do the thumbs down, the pose gets detected. Now if I move my hand slightly behind like this, you see that it's no longer detected and it gives you a range. So this is like a plus or minus two tolerance that we have given. So slight difference is okay, but more than that, it turns red. Same thing for this one as well. This works perfectly fine, but if I bring them somewhere like this, it does not. Now for the punching pose, let's stand up. And I think it's the other hand. There you go. So yeah. Now the pose is detected. Perfect. All right. So now you know how to create and track different body poses. Now this was a part of the interaction SDK. If you want to know more about the body tracking API and movement SDK, then you can check out the playlist link somewhere on the screen. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.